Cross-faction queues have opened the floodgates, and now you can finally play with all of your friends! <clears throat> uh, well, anyway, today we have an important meta update for you. You probably wondered what race is best for your class, so we asked some of the best players in the world what they think. And with that, we bring you the best race for every class in Shadowlands Season 3. Let's start things off with a bang and look at Dark Iron Dwarf. Yes, this race might come as a surprise, but despite being unconventional, it's the best option overall for Rhett Paladins. But why? For one, the Dark Iron Racial offers multiple debuff removals, most notably Bleed and Magic. With so many priests on the ladder, the ability to dispel mind games off yourself is an enormous benefit if it can be comboed with an instant cast heal. After all, one of the biggest advantages RMP has on the ladder is the ability to counter hybrid healing with mind games, so being able to remove it while your healer is stuck in CC has enormous value. But even outside of the priests, being able to dispel bleeds is also incredibly strong into both assassination rogues and feral druids for removing key dot effects like feral frenzy and of course the deadly sepsis combo. So if you want to play around the meta, go dark iron dwarf for ret paladin cross faction cues. And speaking of the meta, Undead is a fashionable choice for one meta giant. You might have guessed it, we're talking about Holy Priest. And well, Discipline too, but we don't know what that is. As a healing priest, Undead is the best overall race. Since fear setups are such a massive part of the meta, having the ability to access a second CC break as a healer has enormous value. This is especially true in the RMP mirror, where a quick will of the Forsaken on a psychic scream can easily swing cooldowns back in your favor. This is quite ironic, isn't it? That the healer best suited for countering RMP might be playing RMP themselves, with the additional CC break being a huge part of the matchup. But even outside the RMP mirror, Undead is still a great choice into teams with Warlocks and Warriors for an additional removal tool. If you want to climb the ladder this season as a healing priest, Undead is the best option for you. And speaking of climbing the ladder, there's over 250 rating you could gain risk free while using skillcap.com. That's right, we have a 250 rating gain guarantee while actively using our website. And with over 600 premium videos, there's a lot of content just for you. Our class courses teach you everything you need to know for ranking up, including damage, control, and defense. Joining today will also give you instant access to the premium section of our Discord, where you can get direct help from pro players. Every season, we see many of our users reach new heights, and the time to improve has never been better. Visit the link in the description to get an exclusive discount on your risk-free subscription, and start your PvP journey today. Next up on our tier list, we have Torin, who are a great option for one mid-tier caster. For balance, the optimal race is mostly a matter of preference, with Night Elf and Torin both being good options. You can't really go wrong either way, but Torin is likely the safer pick. As balance, it's likely that you will be the kill target every game, which gives enormous value to War Stomp both as a defensive tool and as a means to set up Cyclones on enemy healers. Equally as important are Torn's racial passives, with Endurance offering nearly 200 additional stamina and Brawn giving increased crit damage, which certainly help considering balance is all about tanking damage while winning the game in short windows with Star Surge crits. The additional stamina is definitely worth mentioning, especially with the recent change to trinket set bonuses, giving a bolstered amount of HP in order to survive kidney shot setups. Again though, balanced druids can go Night Elf and do just as well, but Torn seems the most consistent for now. Next up we have Panda, which might roll a few eyes, but is actually the best race for at least one meta range DPS. Yes, the race that players once considered newbie is actually Biss for Fire Mages. With the meta shifting over to Blazing Soul, Fire Mages hardly need reduced stun duration of Orc or the stun removal from Human since they can blink stuns anyway. Instead, Pandaren is the best race for Fire Mage, and that's no troll. Pun intended. You might think that having Quaking Palm is useless since it shares DR with Polymorph, but let's think about things for a second. For one, while Polymorph is an amazing spam CC, it isn't always needed for its full 8 second duration while trying to set up kills. More importantly though, the reason many tournament fire mages play Panda has more to do with win conditions and setting up CC on the enemy healer. Since most mages are playing RMP, a full 8 second CC is often overkill for actually landing kills. Combustion is so strong that the 4 second CC from Quaking Palm is a significantly less risky option than going for an interruptible polymorph cast, which will wind up being overkill anyway in most setups. Not only that, but playing as Panda means a PvP trinket can be equipped, and as a fire mage, that is super important since trinket can be comboed with Dragon's Breath or Counterspell to instantly block kills. And speaking of blocking kills, Shadow Priests are good at that too, and surprisingly, Panda is their best race for 925. 
With access to Quaking Palm, Shadow Priests have another instant cast CC tool at their disposal, both for setups and for peels. And once again, playing Panda means playing with a medallion to break out a CC, which works really well since the majority of their defensive toolkit is reactionary. Need to quickly save your partner? Trinket Swap or Trinket Grip. Need to save yourself? Trinket Fade. The benefit of Trinket is huge for a Shadow Priest in the Shadowlands meta. So, since you will need a Trinket equipped anyway, you can't really go wrong with a race that gives you more instant crowd control when you need it the most. With some of the more unusual options out of the way, let's return to normal with Night Elf. Starting with Demon Hunters, which only had two options to begin with anyway. Unfortunately for all you Horde diehards, Night Elf is definitely the best option in the current meta. Blood Elf lost a lot of its value after the Arcane Torrent was changed from an AoE Silence to an AoE Dispel. Since Demon Hunters already have a magic dispel in the form of Consume Magic, you don't really get any additional value with having a worse version of the same spell on a much longer cooldown. Shadow Meld is much more versatile and has a relatively high skill cap when fully mastered. The ability to immune CCs or simply avoid damage by quickly vanishing will give you much more value across the board as Demon Hunter. This isn't even considering the fact that Night Elves have some decent racial passives with increased secondary stats, more dodge, and slightly better movement speed, all of which are more beneficial than what Blood Elves can offer. DH is not alone in the Night Elf ecosystem and it is joined by both Resto and Feral Druids. As a healer, the ability to quickly Shadow Meld Drink has enormous value, especially considering Resto Druid mana was nerfed in the previous patch. And once again, with enough technical mastery, Shadow Meld can be used to immune CC spells or simply to drop enemy targets, which gives Resto Druids the ability to completely bypass critical CC chains or avoid lethal damage. And finally, in the event the Resto Druid is playing 2v2 with Feral Affinity, or if the Druid is simply playing Feral, Shadow Meld opens up the ability to quickly re-stealth for an on-demand rake stun on an enemy target, which can be comboed with other stuns for follow-up or even cross CC. Next up on our list, we have Human, for everyone who likes vanilla ice cream and eats ketchup on their steak. One spec that might smoke some meats in game is Survival Hunter, and this is where things get a bit interesting. Not to spoil anything, but for many of the remaining classes on our list, the best race is usually just a toss-up between Human and Orc. The division between these two races is what PvP Trinket is generally played with each race, and more importantly, whether or not the class or spec can save their team with the CC break from Gladiator's Medallion. In the case of Hunter, Survival generally doesn't have anything to save their team if they need to use a Trinket to peel. Because their kick is limited to melee range, Trinketing an RMP stun doesn't necessarily guarantee a Mind Games or Polymorph can be stopped. Because of this, Survival Hunters will get much more value by simply being human and having more passive CC reduction thanks to Relentless. And in case the Survival Hunter is the kill target, a quick human Trinket can be enough to break up enemy setups. For the same reason, Human is probably best for both Frost and Arcane Mages, which lack Dragon's Breath as a reliable save. Since these specs really don't have any way of instantly stopping a kill with their medallion, it's often best that they play Human with Relentless equipped. Once again, this will just help passively reduce any CC, which is important as both Frost and Arcane, since these specs generally need more uptime in order to truly reach their win conditions. And as far as breaking up enemy win conditions is concerned, Holy Paladins have a few ways of doing that already, which makes Human a solid option for the spec. Once again, playing Human means the ability to play Relentless, which comes in handy as a healer given the endless amount of CC in the game. And since Holy Paladins come equipped with other CC breaks in the form of Bubble and Blessing of Protection, having a Trinket-based crowd control break is hardly needed in most matchups, and you can generally get more value with passive CC reduction. Speaking of cooldowns, Outlaw Rogues seem to have a lot of those, and it just so happens that most of them can be reset. Well, as long as the Rogue has uptime. And if maximizing uptime is the goal, Relentless is the path to get there, which makes Human the best option for Outlaw Rogue. With 15% more stamina than usual thanks to Enduring Brawler and a reduced cooldown on Feint and Evasion, Outlaw is tanky enough to survive stuns anyway, meaning passively reducing other forms of CC has greater value. Since uptime is so vital for an Outlaw Rogue's offensive and defensive toolkit, Human Rally is the best pick for 925. Alright, get ready because it's time for a Legion of Orcs. Starting off, we have Death Knights, which have seen a noticeable increase in popularity this season. Once again, playing Orc means having reduced stun durations passively while also being able to play with a PvP trinket for emergency saves on you or your team. DKs have a few different utility options that give incredible value to their PvP trinket, most notably Anti-Magic Zone. 
Passively reducing stuns while being able to fall back on IBF and save your teammates with Trinket makes Orc the best race for DKs overall in 925. And on the topic of saving their team, BM and Mark's Hunters can do that as well since they have a ranged interrupt. With the PvP medallion equipped, a quick trinket counter shot can quickly deny important casts like Mind Games and Polymorph, giving Orc huge value. With more passive stun reduction thanks to hardiness, Orcs can be an absolute nuisance for rogue teams, which of course are everywhere in the current meta and are one of the key matchups to learn for any hunter team. Moving on to Monks, their Biss race is pretty straightforward in the sense that it's Orc both roles. Once again, the ability to passively reduce stun durations comes in handy for Windwalkers and Mistweavers alike, as both can be vulnerable to dying in stuns. Even though Mistweaver has some tech to avoid setups entirely, it is often not enough to deal with the incredibly high burst damage of Season 3. But with that in mind, Human can be an alternative option for both roles, though likely much weaker for Mistweaver overall. Once again, the advantage of Human is having the ability to equip Relentless, which can be incredibly useful into matchups where stuns aren't such an integral part of the win condition. Moving on to Sub and Asa Rogues, there are a few great options, but Orc is probably consistently the best between both specs. For both specs, dying in repeated stun setups is such a massive issue that reduced stun durations are essential. And for Sub specifically, having bonus attack power is a massive deal for min-maxing kill setups to get the biggest burst possible with cooldown stacking. For Shamans, Orc is also the best race, once again due to how deadly repeated stun setups can be. Generally speaking, Shamans don't die to the first set of goes from the enemy RMP, but instead to the second or third when Trinket isn't available. Because of this, being able to passively reduce the lethality of every setup can make it more reliable to survive go after go. This applies to all specs of Shaman, since all three are generally good kill targets for most setup heavy comps like RMP. With this in mind, Orc is their best race across the board. Continuing this trend are Warlocks. Once again, the bane of the class continues to be stuns. Even though Dark Pact and Unending Resolve are both usable while stunned, they are not reliable enough for surviving consistent enemy setups. Because of this, having reduced stun durations with Orc makes it easier to survive until the next setup, while also granting the ability to equip a PvP trinket in case emergency peels are needed with Mortal Coil, Shadow Fury, Howl of Terror, or even just Fear. And that brings us to the last class on our list, with Warriors also having Orc as their best race in 925. By now, it should be apparent that having a PvP trinket equipped while having passive stun reduction is good for any spec with high utility, and since Warriors are the utility kings, this should really come as no surprise. With tons of team-wide defensives and peels, Warriors need to be repeatedly CC'd on setups in order to snowball games. As Orc, getting these extended setups reliably is much more difficult for the enemy team, especially when PvP trinket can be used as a last resort. And here we have a complete picture of what the faction meta will look like in 925. Once again, these are the optimal picks for cross-faction queues based on the opinions we gathered from multiple rank 1 players and tournament veterans. Some specs like Balanced Druid have a bit of flexibility and have two good options, but for the most part, you can't really go wrong playing what we have listed here. But we want to hear from you. Let us know what class you play and what race you will be choosing for cross-faction queues. And while you're at it, visit the link in the description to get an exclusive discount just for watching this video and start your risk-free PvP journey today. Anyway guys, that about wraps it up for this one. We hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to leave us a like and drop a comment below on your thoughts. As always though, we want to thank all of you for watching. See you soon.